Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Ball Fake Podcast. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure to like, subscribe, and support our new movement by putting Let's Go Viral in the comment section. But if you're listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, make sure to give us a five-star rating and a nice review. But without further ado, here are your hosts, Nicely Chunga Benny and Greg King. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Ball Fake Podcast, members of the Off the Ball Network. And in today's episode, we're going to be breaking down what we saw in Game 5 between Boston and Golden State in the NBA Finals. But before we get started with today's episode, if you guys are new to our YouTube channel or you're listening on any other podcast streaming platform, do me a quick favor before you continue listening to today's episode. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe and turn on post notifications if you're watching on YouTube. And if you're listening on any other podcast streaming platform, make sure to download our episodes, give us a nice little rating, and also a great review as well. But without further ado, let's get started with today's Game 5 breakdown of the NBA Finals. Boston on the road at Chase Center going up against Golden State in a pivotal matchup. Uh, This game was going to decide for me who wins the series. And before the series started, I picked Golden State in six games for a ton of reasons, right? More so having to do with the fact that obviously, you know, they know exactly what's needed in order for them to win games at this level, right? You know, Boston dealing with a little bit of inexperience, and we've seen that coming to fruition throughout this this entire postseason run. You know, there's a lot of teams that they outmatched as far as talent-wise from top to bottom, right? Whether you're talking about the Milwaukee Bucks due to Chris Middleton being out, or you're talking about the Miami Heat. I thought, you know, in both of those series, they were clearly the better team, but the lack of understanding has really hurt Boston throughout the course of this postseason. And fortunately, they've been able to make it all the way up to this point where they're competing for a championship, right? But I've never seen a team of this caliber be so hot and cold on a night to night basis, right? You know, you typically see those type of tendencies out of bad teams, you know, bottom feeder teams, like maybe the Detroit Pistons, a Sacramento Kings, you know, a la the Oklahoma City Thunder, but you won't see these type of tendencies too often from a championship caliber team, right? And I think that's where Boston is kind of an outlier when it comes to, you know, them matching up against Golden State. I think Boston is the better team. I've talked about it on, on the podcast multiple times. I mean, they they have the better two-way talent. I think this is there's a, a clear talent deficit between them and Golden State right now. You know, Golden State, they're dealing with a Clay Thompson, who hasn't played basketball for two seasons. Draymond Green has shown signs of regression as an offensive threat. And now that they've taken away his ability to, you know, operate in the short row due to them playing drop coverage, you know, that started to become a little bit more apparent. And it's, overall, it's just a bad matchup for him. But, you know, you also have inexperienced guys like Jordan Poole and, you know, Otto Porter Jr. when it comes to, you know, just playing at this level. Same thing for Andrew Wiggins. But, you know, Boston... You have probably the top three best players in this series outside of Steph Curry, you know, with Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. You have a great supporting cast. I talk about, you know, their defense all the time, the interchangeable parts, point of attack guys. Marcus Smart was a defensive player of the year and you're well coached. But let's talk about the game tonight because there was a lot of things that I want to point out specifically on Boston's side. And for whatever reason, Boston, in my opinion, I think this in order for them to win this series, it's got to be on Jason Tatum's playmaking. And I thought heading into tonight, I think it makes sense for, you know, Ime Adoka to, you know, try to get him some easier looks, you know, because it has been a lot of bullish penetration for him in the Boston Celtics in a half court setting. But that hasn't been their biggest issue. Their biggest issue has to do with execution, staying to the game plan and just making sure that they're, you know, paying attention to, you know, detail when it comes to, you know, execution. That's been their biggest downfall throughout not only this series, but throughout the entire postseason. And Boston is one in six when they commit over 16 turnovers and they're 13 and two when they commit less than 16 turnovers. So it didn't really make a lot of sense, in my opinion, to see Marcus Smart play the role of the main initiator when it comes to, you know, the the lead guard in a half court setting. Obviously, he's not going to make the defense collapse as well as a guy like Tatum. Like Tatum is the sole reason why, you know, you're seeing guys like Marcus Smart, Derek White, Al Horford, Peyton Pritchard, Grant Williams, Jalen Brown, get all these open, uncontested shots on the perimeter, specifically whether we're talking about corner kicks, throwback options, or maybe even in transition. I mean, in the first half, the Boston Celtics had zero points in transition. Marcus Smart, he doesn't do as well of a job in terms of pushing the basketball, getting out and running and igniting transition as well as a guy like Jason Tatum, who's more prone to do that due to his athleticism and him just wanting to you know, negate half court basketball because of the defensive coverages he's seeing on a nightly basis. But once again, I agree with Odoka trying to, you know, make Tatum's job a little bit easier. But if you saw what happened in the first half, you know, Boston, very low scoring, shot 39% from the field, 39 points at the half. 
you know, just an ugly half for them overall, you know, and uh, obviously, you know, turnovers played a part in that. But that's another thing, too. We all understand Marcus Smart, one of his biggest downfalls has to be his decision making as well. And although, you know, Jason Tatum, he's not this natural playmaker. He's not the Luka Doncic, LeBron James prototype where, you know, it's a big guard methodically break down defenses with his decision making and just being able to rely on that type of skill set. Right. Although, you know, he has the capabilities and shown signs and flashes of being able to do that. That's not who he naturally is. But I didn't think the right adjustment was to make him play off ball a little bit more in this series, let alone in this game overall. And not only did that affect Tatum, because, you know, Tatum in the first half, he wasn't too bad if we're talking about, you know, just him knocking down shots on the perimeter. I mean, his his field goal percentage around the rim in the restricted area heading into tonight, he was shooting 50% in the restricted area. And a lot of that has to do with, you know, him just not knowing how to finish around the basket for whatever reason. I think he's, you know, too focused in on trying to accumulate fouls and things of that nature. But I just didn't understand that adjustment from Ime Adoka. I thought it was a good idea, once again, to, you know, try to get him some easier looks. But I thought the frequency of Tatum playing off ball was just a little bit excessive, in my opinion. And I think that was one of the biggest sparks as to why Boston had such a tough half in the first half of this game, right? But let's talk about Jalen Brown, because I think Jalen Brown's production or lack thereof tonight had a lot to do with the fact that, you know, Tatum wasn't breaking down the defense and Jalen Brown's getting less opportunities where he can just attack straight out of closeouts and things of that nature, right? He had a fairly inefficient night and you didn't really get much production out of anybody else outside of your starters tonight. If you're Boston, you know, Golden State, they were plus 25 in bench points tonight. Jordan Poole was phenomenal in terms of, you know, his production from the third quarter on. Clay Thompson was pretty good as well tonight. And, you know, same thing for Andrew Wiggins. You know, this was the Andrew Wiggins game. He had 26 points, 13 rebounds. And if you're going to state, you know, with Curry struggling tonight, because we saw a different adjustment out of the Boston Celtics, the way that they were covering him defensively. They were really trying to close those gaps on Curry, right? Really force him to be a passer tonight, not give him much air space. And once again, I just felt like I understand what Ime Udoku is doing, you know, just trying to making sure that things are a little bit more certain for us defensively. But I just thought that there were a few unnecessary adjustments on his end tonight. But more importantly, Boston, they just have a hard time in terms of sticking to the game plan and making sure that they're continuing to take advantage of what's working for them in this series. I mean, you're talking about in the first half, you know, they're attacking Jordan Poole and Stephen Curry, putting these guys in a lot of action really doing a great job in terms of mismatch hunting, right? Getting smaller defenders on some of their premier wings in Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum. But for whatever reason, it seems like over the course of this postseason, in the second half, Boston just gets really stagnant and content with this isolation heavy basketball, this my turn, your turn style of play. And that's primarily one of the reasons why this series is now 3-2 in favor of Golden State rather than Boston. I want to talk about Golden State a little bit. I talked about, you know, the production that they got from their bench. Jordan Poole was really good in the second half specifically in the bottom of the third quarter, mid to bottom of the third quarter and leading into the fourth quarter. But, you know, Andrew Wiggins, he's been doing a really good job in terms of, you know, just staying aggressive in this series, right? And, you know, he doesn't have to do anything special, right? They're not asking him to be Kevin Durant or things of that nature. But, you know, Wiggins, he's taking it upon himself to, you know, attack relentlessly, a diagonal penetration and really put pressure on his defense, right? And, you know, in instances where Robert Williams is out of the game, you know, Wiggins, he, he's going to have a free will to the basket, right? You know, the, there's not going to be as much rim protection. Oh, Horford, at times, you know, he's been a little bit late on the rotations. We saw a lot of that tonight. And, you know, him and Derek White over the last two games really kind of been absent. You know, Marcus Smart, he was decent tonight offensively, although I didn't like, you know, his overall objective tonight. You know, he, he still finished the game 7 of 15, 20 points. Jalen Brown, not the greatest night for him. Finished the game with 18 points. And then Tatum, Tatum's got to just stop going away from what's working and buy into this playmaking role because that's going to be what's going to win you this series. But Draymond Green in the first quarter specifically, he was a little bit better. Instead of, and I know I talked about, I didn't uh, watch the majority of the first quarter, but a little bit in the first half, instead of having Draymond, you know, set screens as a role, man, they put him in a little bit more handoff action. And that allowed him and propelled him into getting a few easier baskets because we know he's so great at a fake DHO and, you know, just making defense collapse that way. And ironically, if you're the Boston Celtics and you're not seeing you know, natural pick and roll coverage, you're not going to be in position to play drop coverage. And that won't allow you to take away four and three opportunities 
if you're Draymond Green in a half court setting. But in transition, I thought Golden State, once again, that's been what's really kept them in this series. But ironically, I find it fascinating how in a game where Draymond Green commits six fouls, Stephen Curry has a poor shooting night from outside, doesn't hit a single three pointer. And that was the first time he's gone scoreless from beyond the arc since November of 2018. Boston literally wins the third quarter. They're a plus 11 in that instance. And outside of Andrew Wiggins, there really wasn't a whole lot of consistent offense tonight, at least in the first couple of quarters, right? I don't understand how Boston loses this game when you tie all those things into consideration. I mean, obviously we can look at the turnovers and the points that Golden State was able to accumulate off those live ball turnovers and things of that nature, but it's just like, just have a hard time of just really pinpointing how Boston is at such a disadvantage when they have all the advantages in their favor. I mean, you're talking about they're getting to the free throw line more frequently this series. Golden State has had a hard time in terms of, you know, being able to contain the dribble the point of attack offensively in the half court. You're the better two-way team. You have two of the top three players in this series on your roster. And it's just, this is a bad matchup for Golden State overall. I just don't see how, you know, Boston doesn't win this series. But it, it it's all has to do with execution and, you know, just paying attention to detail. I just don't understand it. Like, once again, like the immaturity for Boston, especially to close out these quarters, because it seems like, you know, especially, I wouldn't say the better half of the last couple of games, you know, Golden State, they just find in ways, you know, kind of keep that cushion somewhat in their favor. And it's like Boston's just getting too relaxed for me in this series. And it's just like there's they don't have any major adjustments that they need to make. There's just it's very minor adjustments. There doesn't need to be a big change anywhere, really. They really don't have any lineup issues. They match up well defensively, offensively. They've had a lot of advantages and a lot of things pinpointed in their favor throughout this series. But it's just like, you know, they just have to find better ways, you know, just continue to apply the pressure and if you're boston i don't understand how in a series where you're favored in the half court setting as far as matchups on both sides of the floor i don't understand how you guys are not dominating the non-curry minutes but you know in the event that draymond green is struggling which he has clay thompson a little bit inconsistent i just don't see how you guys don't take advantage of that especially when golden state has no advantages defensively but i mean with that being said game six will be thursday i picked golden state in six i do expect golden state to more than likely close boston out in this series and unfortunately you know boston they're, they're gonna have to get back to the drawing board do the necessary things that are gonna put them in position to win this series let alone get back into the series and you know force a game seven heading back to the chase center but you guys let me know what y'all think about this here in the comment section thank you guys so much for tuning in to another episode with me here on the ball fake podcast if you guys are new to our youtube channel or you're listening on any other podcast streaming platform make sure to like comment and subscribe turn on post notification give us a nice review five star rating and make sure to download our episodes to share with all with your friends but besides that it's your boy nice and chunga you're listening to the ball fake podcast and we out praise god